in the first tutorial in this series, I had mentioned that we can see our detector consisting of three components, pre-processing, model and post-processing. The first component is responsible for maybe resizing your images and performing data augmentation and hence we call it a pre-processing. The resizing aspect is important because our model, that is the neural network, would want to have all the images in a given mini batch to be of same size. So one obvious responsibility of pre-processing block is to take the image and simply resize it. Here I have an image which is of dimension 640 by 426. I pass it to the pre-processing block and I get a resized image of 416 by 460. And you should wonder why we are even talking about it. This is no big deal. Resizing image is simple and image classification neural network training. We do this all the time. The trick to this resizing here in the context of object detection is that the bounding box are also involved. So if you are going to resize the image, you better update the various bounding boxes belonging in that image. Take this image as an example. It is 640 by 426 and these are the bounding boxes for the objects. That is the two giraffes that you see. And here is the resized version of it. I have resized it to 416 by 416. And the original bounding boxes are now invalid. Also, if you closely see the image, the resize image, you can see that the, this resizing is not that great because the aspect ratio of the image is not preserved. By the way, I, I'm only talking about resizing here, uh, but during the training, you would want your images to be augmented. Augmentation will help you create many different versions of the same image, which would increase the variety of samples you are using during the training. For example, I could also do horizontal and vertical flipping and you can easily understand that that would make the bounding boxes invalid again. So I want you to think a bit on a larger scale instead of thinking that we are just trying to resize the image. And if I resize it, may, it's not that hard to adjust the bounding boxes as such. So there are many augmentation transforms that would range from shifting, rotating and even eliminating some of the objects from the image. And hence we need to take a help from a library that can do this task for us. In this tutorial, I want to introduce you to one such library for doing image augmentation. The library is not specific to object detection, but it has a great support for dealing with what I mentioned earlier. The library is called Albumentations. You would import it like this and here is a code snippet that shows its usage. The library provides a function called compose that takes a list of transforms to be supplied. In this code snippet, I am using the resize transform. The compose returns a function to which we will pass the images, boxes and class labels. But more importantly, notice that I am specifying that the bounding box passed would be in the Pascal VOC format. If you are not familiar with Pascal VOC format, check out the bounding box format tutorial on this channel. Here is how we will call this function that is returned by the compose. The resize underscore transform is actually a function here. You would pass the image as the numpy array, the bounding boxes in the VOC format because that's what we specified to the compose function and the corresponding class labels. Now passing images and boxes should be obvious because we want both, the, both of them to be transformed. But why do we need to pass the labels? Actually, there are some transforms that may eliminate or remove some objects so that the result of transform would tell us which ones we have kept. That's why it is essential to pass the corresponding class labels for the bounding boxes that we have provided. Finally, we will retrieve the transformed image and boxes like this. Since resizing will not change the labels or will not eliminate the objects, I'm not 
extracting them, but they are present in the resize transform result dictionary. And here is how the new image and its bounding box would look like. So it's still, it is not an image which in which the aspect ratio has been preserved. So let's see how we would perform the resizing while keeping the aspect ratio of the image intact. You would use two transforms this time. Note that the first argument of compose is a list. The first transform is called longest max size and it rescales the image so that the maximum side is equal to the max size while keeping the aspect ratio of the initial image. The second transform can pad and only if it is needed. You can also specify the color that you want to use the padding. Because of the combination of these transforms, you will get what is called a letterbox image. This letterbox transform is widely used in object detection. Here is how we would do it, the rest of the snippet, which is essentially same as the first example that I showed to you earlier. So essentially the, the difference is the list of the transforms that I have specified, the rest is exactly the same. And here is how the resulting image in, in which aspect ratio is preserved would look like. As you can see the padding on the top and the bottom. Now, so far I have shown the basic, but the essential transform you would want to have both during the training as well as during the test. But remember I had mentioned that the training would want to create many variations of a given sample or a given image. So let's see how, how we could do that. It's also pretty easy thanks to Albumentations library. They provide bunch of transforms and you can see I have I have a lot of them here. And it, more interestingly, with each transform is associated their chances of occurrence. For example, for the affine, I have set the P to be 1 just for the sake of example here. It means that this affine transform is always going to happen. It, 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 it will do scaling between 0 0.5 to 1.5 of your image. It could translate it by the percentage that you have specified and it will, it will use the, the, the C value to be the same as the one that we had used for the letterboxing. So you could also do color jittering, uh, which by the way helps with image classification aspect of object detection. Remember that with object detection, we are also predicting the classes for the bounding boxes. So jittering of the image is helpful. So I ran this transform few times to show the generated images. But before, before I show it to them, I also want you to look at line number 21 onwards. You can see that the letterbox transform is still there. So essentially we'll be doing a lot of augmentation, but once this augmentation is done, after that, the essential augmentation will be to convert it into a letterbox image. So here are some samples that I generated. This is the first one. Uh, this managed to horizontally flip the image and you can see the bounding box transform is proper. Here is definitely some scaling and shifting has happened. It is also horizontally flipped by the way. And this is the one I wanted to show. You can see that the smaller giraffe has been eliminated from this picture. And when you will look at the transformed labels, you will see that now we will only have one label. The image also seems to be blurry. This is the original one, but with some affine transform. Again, uh, horizontally flipped, but you can see that the image has been scaled down significantly in this. And finally, uh, this one, smaller giraffe is still present, but we can say that it has become very small and the bounding box is also small. So now, so far what I have shown you are the operation on images that were stored as NumPy array, but we need to transform them into tensors as well, because if you are using PyTorch or TensorFlow as a, as your uh, neural network training library or framework, you would need tensors. We also would need to normalize the image pixels as well. That is, a put the value of each pixel between 0 and 1 or use the, the normalization that generally is used by some pre-trained backbone that you are using. So let's quickly look at the two transforms that can help us do that. As you can see in this pipeline, I am using the first transform to do again the letterbox image creation 
and then i have two more the first one is the one which is putting the pixels between 0 and 1 we, we say that it is normalizing and it is also converting the image to float and finally the second one the 2 tensor v2 is the one which is going to convert it to pytorch tensor now it's not just a matter of copying a numpy array to pytorch but because it is also doing channel shuffling in numpy the channels are specified using the last dimension so if you have an image of 416 by 416 and it's a colored image numpy will tell you the shape is 416 416 3 whereas in pytorch you always have the channel as the first dimension for a tensor so you should have 3 416 416 here for example, when I ran this transform, you can see that final result, the image, the basic transformed image. First of all, it's a, it's a PyTorch tensor. That's why you see torch.size and you can see that the dimensions have been changed. And that is all for this tutorial. In my opinion, this is a very well designed library and you can always write, by the way, your own custom transforms using uh, the basic primitives that they provide. Uh, there are also few more advanced concepts on how you could dynamically compose the transforms that I have not gone over. Their documentation is quite decent and maybe in future I will go over some of those constructs. You will find the link to the Google Colab notebook that shows all the examples that I showed to you in this tutorial. And with that, goodbye for now. See you in the next tutorial in this series. Bye-bye.